Hello, I am James Tyree, Deacon of St. John's Episcopal Church here in Norman, Oklahoma, and welcome to this particular service. When today we will speak on not one, but two saints who will have feast days this week. And so let's get started. We will begin with collects for both of the saints. Almighty God, you have revealed to your church your eternal being of glorious majesty and perfect love as one God in trinity of persons. Give us grace that, like your bishop Gregory of Nyssa, we may continue steadfast in the confession of this faith and constant in our worship of you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, you raised up Gregory of Rome to be a servant of the servants of God and inspired him to send missionaries to preach the gospel to the English people. Preserve in your church the Catholic and apostolic faith they taught that your people, being fruitful in every good work, may receive the crown of glory that never fades away. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We will read a scripture from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 10, beginning in verse 42. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lorded over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. As many of you already know, and as you've just heard I introduce myself at the start of this recording, my first name is James. But apparently, I had an alternate name while growing up, which was Johnny Jimmy. You see, my brother's name was John, so we had similar names and we were kind of close in age, so it was quite common for our mom to initially call my brother and then immediately correct herself and call me, hence Johnny Jimmy. And yes, my brother's alternate name seemed to be Jimmy Johnny. I remember my grandfather, whose name was also John, as was, my, as was his son, my uncle, would add an uh between the names when he did that, as in Johnny, uh, Jimmy. Well, today we will discuss not one, but two saints who have feast days this week. Both were bishops of long ago, both strengthened the, churches, the Christian church at vulnerable times, and both were named Gregory. So we are guaranteed to call each one by his actual name, with next to no chance of confusing them as Gregory Gregory. One is Gregory the Great, Bishop of Rome. The other is Gregory, Bishop of Nyssa, with whom we will start. Now I spoke of my family a minute ago, but this guy, Gregory, Bishop of Nyssa, he had a family. He was the son of two saints, Basil and Amelia, and his older brother came to be known as Saint Basil the Great. No pressure, right? <laughs> well, the family was from an area in what is now Turkey, and Gregory, who lived from about 335 to 395 AD, was pretty important in his own right. Gregory of Nyssa, whose feast day is March 9th, was primarily a philosopher and a scholar who increasingly turned his life toward the church. He became Bishop of Nyssa in the year 372 and lived in a time when Arianism, which is a view that believed in Christ but not in his divinity, not in his godlike nature, was rather prevalent in the Christian church. 
Gregory of Nyssa was a staunch defender of orthodox teachings of Jesus and his church. And he preached and wrote against Arianism and other heresies of his day at the Council of Constantinople and other major councils and events. In fact, Gregory of Nyssa was the one who came up and first described and explained the Trinity doctrine that we know to this day as a defense against Arianism and other heresies that denied some aspect of Christ or of our salvation. I mentioned before that he was into philosophy and Platonic reasoning also heavily influenced his speech and writings on divinity and spirituality. On the downside, Gregory of Nyssa was banished from his uh, position as bishop over accusations from rivals of financial mismanagement. But he was cleared and his see was restored just a couple of years later. Also, scholars over the centuries came to question how many of writings attributed to him were actually his. But Bishop Gregory of Nyssa's reputation has been on a bit of an upswing over the last century or so, as more is learned about his life and, and, um, and what he accomplished, thus reaffirming him as a true pillar of the Christian church, especially in Eastern Orthodoxy. Now the other Gregory is known as Gregory the Great, Bishop of Rome, or Gregory the First. Born in the year 540 AD, he has two feast days, March 12th, the date of his death, in the year 604, and also September 3rd, which is, uh, which is often uh, celebrated in Western churches. While Gregory of Nyssa served during a time of tumult within, uh, the Christian, within a Christian church of growing influence, Pope Gregory I became a uh, bishop during a time of political tumult and discord after the fall of the Roman Empire. He came from a line of high-ranking nobles and Christians. Gregory the Great was related to two popes, Felix III and Agapetus, and he had aunts who were nuns as well. Uh, while Gregory of Nyssa was a philosopher and scholar early in his adult life, Gregory of Rome was a chief administrator of that city in his early adulthood. By age 30, he resigned in order to devote more time to Christ and his church. He established monasteries and served as deacon, as a deacon to Pope Benedict before he himself was elected Pope in the year 590. Life was especially difficult in Europe during this time. And Gregory I, or Gregory the Great, made it a priority for the church and followers of Christ to care for the poor and for those who were far less fortunate, of which there were many. He had the church pay ransoms for prisoners of invading Lombards, spent a great deal more of the church's treasure to care for victims of plague and of famine, and exhorted the church to treat Jews better than they often were at that time. A lot of the church's coffers were spent on helping victims of famine, plague, and war, but Gregory was also was concerned about the teaching and shepherding duties of bishops and priests. For that, he wrote a book called Pastoral Care, which included this following snippet. Act in such a way that your humility may not be a weakness, nor your authority be severity. Justice must be accompanied by humility. That humility may render justice lovable. It became a manual for holy life throughout the Middle Ages, this book called Pastoral Care. Gregory the Great also conducted preaching tours at a number of churches and wrote, the book, uh, wrote a book about the Gospels that he called Homilies, which was published in the year 591 and it proved to be a useful guide for, for preaching and for teaching for a number of centuries. Gregory the Great, Bishop of Rome, is considered one of the four doctors of their Western church, along with Augustine, Ambrose, and Jerome. And I like what one Anglican historian wrote about him. 
he wrote, it is impossible to conceive what would have been the confusion, the lawlessness, the chaotic state of the Middle Ages without the medieval papacy. I shall go back and read that again. It is impossible to conceive what would have been the confusion, the lawlessness, the chaotic state of the Middle Ages without the medieval papacy. And of the medieval papacy, the real father is Gregory the Great. So indeed, as you think back on these two historically influential followers of Christ, try to not confuse Gregory of Nyssa, who lived in the fourth century, with Pope Gregory I, or Gregory the Great, who lived in the uh, sixth century, in early 600s. But if you do occasionally pull a Johnny Jimmy mix up with these brothers of Christ of the same name, well, that's okay. They know what you mean. Amen. <laughs>